Hey traders, so inside our trade club right now, I know there are a few of you, especially if you're newer to the trade club, if you're new to trading just few months in or whatever. This is the way you look at the market, which is um, what I often say, A plus B equals to C formula. The way you study the market is more to I see price do this, BNR, I go long. I see price go down, uh, breakthrough support, I go short, which is not wrong. You know, This kind of way of reading the market is not wrong. But the key thing is you, your, your, your knowledge and the, the, the way you read the market is very restricted because the things that you see are all surface and just one-sided. And that's why I always emphasize on multiple time frame analysis or top down analysis. Because when you start performing top down analysis, it doesn't make you uh, technically a better trader or uh, perform better in terms of PL. But it allows you to gain more clarity in terms of knowing what's the overall direction and know that where is your price position and know that what are you getting into. Let me highlight this again. First thing is knowing the bigger picture flow slash direction know your price position understand market condition so once you study when you do a top down analysis these are three big things that you gain from a, from a perspective right because you you understand if you know what the bigger picture is doing What's the overall structure? Structure means who's in control. Is it buyer or is it sellers in control? So what direction are we on an uptrend? Are we on a downtrend? Price position basically means if let's say you look at the five minute is here and you're trying to trade here, then when you go up to the high time frame, sometimes the level that are getting in may be insignificant, may be so subtle that no one knows. And that's why if you're getting into level where no one knows on the high time frame, which means the big players, they don't even know this level, they can't even see this level, obviously there won't be any um, big volume, there won't be any sort of volume spike, there won't be clear direction, there won't be any um, clear momentum because you're getting at level where no one even concerned about, no one even care about the level. So that's the importance of understanding your price position because once you understand your price position, it goes to the third thing, which is what are the current market conditions? Because if let's say we put a replay onto last week, or yeah, last, I said last one to two weeks on pound yen, market was on a clear consolidation. It was slow. It's in, it was in what we call a volatility contraction period. The market wasn't moving no clear direction, no volume, no structure. Structure as in we're still on a bearish trend, but short term wise, market is just not going anywhere. So when you go onto the high time frame, you see this kind of candlesticks popping up, really tiny candle, and it looks like we're not, we're not really having any energy, then you pretty much avoid trading. You, you already know you should be avoiding uh, trading. And that's the importance of why I always say, uh, why I always emphasize on top-down analysis is to allow you to gain clarity. And the most important thing is know who's in control. Why is it so important to know who's in control? It's because when you know who's in control, then even if you go counter trend, let's say you know oh, sellers are in control, it doesn't mean you cannot go long. It's just that when you go long, while understanding that sellers are in control, it allows you to have realistic expectation. That means if let's say you go long, you know the bigger picture is on a bearish trend, then you are likely to have a very realistic target. You say, hey, I'm going to target 2R, 3R, that's it because I know I'm against the flow. I know I'm against the, the bigger player. So I'm not going to hold it long. As opposed to, let's say, you know that the trend is over bearish and you short it there. On the high time frame, you identify that, hey, this is a clear resistance. 
now you can use that knowledge, can use that confluence to hold on to your position longer because that gives you some sort of confidence as well. So if we go back to what happened to this trader on the five minute, so what basically happened was he Sorry, just one second. He hop onto the lower time frame on the five minute. And the first thing he did was he looked at the five minute and he said, hey, uh, today we have um, a break and a retest like that. And he went long. So what's the problem here? The problem is the things you, the things you see is to surface it's just one side it's like a piece of white paper nothing there there's no evidence there's no confirmation there's no just not enough confidence it doesn't give you enough confidence to say hey i i take this trade because of xyz reason and i'm happy to take the calculated risk and that's what you should be doing as a trader because us as a trader every single day when i take a position is about understanding whether am I uh, being well informed? Well informed as in that do I know what the chart is trying to tell me? What price is trying to tell me? Because if you can't answer this question, ultimately you are trading based on pure instinct, pure intuition. If you rely too much on intuition, I've, I've said this in one of our video before, if you over rely on intuition, what does that mean? Means you are likely to be gambling all right let me try to try the find lesson about intuition um, and yeah if you look at my telegram right now you can see you can see we have a lesson on 6th of september where I say intuition is real, but relying too much on intuition equals to gamble. And remember, intuition is real because you have an intuition, because probably in the past, you have experienced something like that before. And that's why intuition is, is real. But the key thing is, if you over rely on intuition, then it becomes gamble. All right, so back into the chart. Can you do something like that? I would suggest not. It's not a no, definite no, because everyone, no matter what, we still have our own trading style. But for me, as a leader here, I will still tell you, I don't recommend you trading this way. So what's the easy way to trade? Uh, what, what's the better way to trade pound yet? For me, Let's do a proper one, go down from the top down analysis. Remember, bigger picture flow, price position, understanding market structure. So first thing first is we go on to the daily and we just, just have a glance on the daily chart. And immediately you can tell we are on a trending market and it takes off the market condition. We know the market is trending and it's likely to move in one direction. And then what's the overall bigger picture flow? What's the market structure? What's the direction? It's on a bearish trend why because we got massive rally but midterm short to midterm wise we've been seeing massive amount of selling pressure since early july so that tells you short term wise as a short term trader is probably more realistic and more wise to go short all right and then what else what can we see so we got clear sell off clear pullback what do we see here this is a big thing This also tell you that sellers are back in control because if I put on the replay and I blocked it out here, at this point of time, everyone would have thought it's on a bias market and inside the channel, I told all of you it's still bearish. Why? It's because the overflow is still bearish. All right. So right now, as price close back under this 191.96, anything below this 191.96, is on a seller's market. The seller's market means we are still looking to go 
short. All right. So now we we understand the overall direction, the bigger uh, the the condition, the market structure, and now you ask yourself, hey, if I trade right now, how about my price position? Price position, I should I shall uh, sort of adjust the the sequence here. So price position should be like your your final checklist, the, the, the final criteria. If it doesn't take, most likely I'm not going to take a trade. So you understand the direction, you understand the bigger picture flow, you understand the market condition is trending bearish. But the key thing is, if I'm looking to trade here, is it does it offer me first thing first, a high probability of success? Second thing is, how about the risk reward? And that's the thing that this, this setup just didn't take off, which is if I trade here, I'm very late. It's just even if you try to sell here, trying to short this break and retest at 186.52, it's still pretty late. And that's something that I will say, it's better to not trade pound gain in the short term. Unless you see a significant shift back to the downside, you can look for short term long. Or unless price pulls back deeper, offering you a much more premium price to go short, then you can do it. All right. So that's it for the short lesson. It's not too short, 12 minutes. But yeah, I hope all of you understand this. I know a few of you in the trade club often like to do this way. Just look at the lower time frame and then you just start making decision. You can do that. But in the long run, you're just not well informed. Right, you are missing out a lot of things, you're missing out a lot of clues, you're trading without much evidence. Alright? I'll talk to you in the next lesson. Bye bye.